What's happening, Hot Wheelers? Joe Motor here. Got another Kraken Yak video for you today. Um, really excited about the cars I'm going to show off today. A um, uh, couple of green lights. This uh, Heritage Racing Shelby back here. Really interesting piece. Uh, this Demolition Derby Caprice Wagon, which has been on my wish list for quite a while. Finally got that in the collection. And then uh, this other Johnny Lightning Richard Petty Charger. Uh, hobby exclusive here, the very first Camaro Z28 green light release. And then peeking out back here is the uh, Willie's Gasser, the RLC club release from Hot Wheels. We're going to crack that open. And then uh, we've got some pieces here that are technically green light castings, but they're uh, released by a company called Acme Trading Company. But uh, really cool releases, and they're technically green light toolings. So um, we're going to crack them open and take a look. All right, let's get started here with this uh, Greenlight Heritage Racing release. This is a 65 Shelby GT350. It's from Series 2 of the Heritage Racing uh, series. And uh, if you know my collecting habits, uh, Heritage Racing is right up my alley. And this piece really stood out to me. There were quite a few other pieces in this release, and they were mostly Ford GTs and Mustangs. And uh, I don't need every single Mustang and GT that Greenlight has to offer, but this one in particular stood out. I really like the reductive graphics and the, the blacked out wheels on this piece really stood out and uh, turns out it has a pretty interesting history. It's the Charlie Kemp um, a magical Mustang, I think is what they called it, but let's take a closer look at it. And there we go. Just really enjoy the plain white color on this piece with those blacked out tires and wheels just really really nice contrast there and the just kind of minimal uh, graphics on the side the BP and 23 in the kind of retro style You've got the GT350 insignia there with the, the pinstripe and uh, then on top you've got Charlie Kemp's uh, sort of signature there with the really regal blue uh, racing stripes down the center of the car a 23 repeated here across the hood and then this orange on the front it's just this almost like a neon orange headlights and bumper just really really interesting accent here on this piece uh, go around to the back got some nice painted tail lights the hood opens of course because it's a green light so we can see down into the engine bay really cool and uh, I think the only thing that bothers me a little bit is there's a little bit of a paint issue here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but the bumper coming around on that front quarter panel is a little bit splotchy. And if you look at the original car, if you look up this car online, uh, I don't even think the paint went that far. I think it stops about right here. So it might be a slightly different model, uh, slightly different tooling that Greenlight is using here. So it's not quite accurate, but it's pretty close. And, you know, I really enjoy uh, this piece so it's definitely going in the collection for sure take a look at the base really quick green light numbers all their cars but I don't think this one is especially rare or anything but really love that piece next we'll take a look at the 67 Chevrolet Camaro Z28 it's a hobby exclusive from green light and uh, commemorates the very first Camaro Z28 uh, Joe Heichman's name is here on the side of the car as he developed this first sort of Z28 race car uh, really interesting history and really fancy looking gold Camaro here so let's take a look at it and it's even more handsome out of the package really soft gleaming gold color all the way around uh, this Camaro and um, really like the the Firestone lettered tires with the blacked out wheels and uh, chrome rims really nice detail there very crisp and sharp tampos on the side very easy to read really nice contrast and uh, inside you can sort of see the bucket seat and steering wheel it's all black in there with the roll cage Johnny Moore the driver's name there on top with um, black racing stripes and uh, red accents around the number four uh, white circle there Painted headlights as usual with our green light releases and treaded rubber tires. Metal base there with um, the number. Usually the more limited releases from green light, you see the sticker on the bottom. Then there are tail lights there, nice painted detail. And the license plate there with USA 1 written on it. So really beautiful car all the way around. And apparently, let's take a look at the hood real quick, but apparently this car 
uh, didn't do too well on the racetrack. Nice flat black on the interior there with the red accent on the engine bay. The uh, car uh, didn't finish and uh, didn't do too well in quite a few of the races that it competed in and uh, kind of left the racetrack in disgrace and disappeared for several years only to resurface and be found later and I think it's been restored since then but uh, uh, not famous for doing well on the racetrack but definitely famous because it was credited as the first Z28 so I think it's really great that Greenlight pays tribute to these old vintage race cars have a little piece of history racing history in your hands here and it's really a stunning casting it goes really well with the other Camaro release that uh, Greenlight did recently uh, so these two will look pretty nice side by side. Let's take a look at a couple of Johnny Lightning releases. This one in particular I think is a special edition of uh, the Richard Petty 1974 Dodge Charger in the red and blue livery with the blue wheels and Goodyear tires. You can see some Richard Petty facts here on the side of the uh, packaging and the signature there but I'll give you a kind of overview of the package. Limited to one of 1752 so that's a pretty limited edition. I know you can also find the uh, Plymouth Roadrunner version of this car and then I think there's a couple of Racing Champions releases of the Daytona or the Superbird. In fact I noticed you could buy a commemorative set of all four of these cars if you're a Richard Petty fan you might want to check into that. I think you can just find it online. Uh, but I came across this one and had to have it because it was a recent release and uh, we'll go with my other uh, Johnny Lightning stock car legends but also with the Richard Petty releases from the Hot Wheels Vintage Racing Series so I may also pick up the the Roadrunner but for now we've got the Charger crack it open here and uh, don't really need to say much about Richard Petty if you don't know anything about him look him up probably one of the uh, greatest figures in race car history uh, but some nice detail here from Johnny Lightning it's nice to see Johnny Lightning doing continuing to do some vintage race cars you can see the 43 there on the uh, the uh, right headlight there on uh, the hood opens on this piece or it should let's see if we can get it to open there we go not much detail in there that's a little disappointing uh, just kind of the same old color as the car but um, I guess it's nice to have that opening feature and then the STP colors all the way around but uh, you can't really go wrong with uh, a Richard Petty vintage race car there's been a lot of different releases of uh, Petty cars over the years and uh, I don't have every variation of course but uh, this one in particular it's nice to have a recent release from Johnny Lightning with the metal base metal body and uh, real rider tires be a nice addition to the collection there so really excited about that piece then uh, this piece here I have been trying to track down for quite a while and I guess I forgot about it for a while and then I started looking for it again and I finally scored one. This is from the sort of legendary Demolition Derby series from Johnny Lightning. What makes this one unique is that it was released during sort of a transition era in Johnny Lightning's history. You may remember Johnny Lightning's Playing Mantis era which was really kind of one of the most interesting periods in Johnny Lightning's history and uh, the guys that were part of Playing Mantis are now part of round two who uh, have uh, revived the brand which is great uh, but for a while there it transitioned it went to uh, a, an RC2 corporation and for this release it was part of a brand called Learning Curve before Tomy took it over and when Tomy took over the brand uh, the, the uh, cars became uh, more plastic there was uh, less metal on the bases and the, the packaging became pretty minimal during the Learning Curve era though you had minimal packaging. You had this sort of regular carded uh, bubble blister thing, but you still had a premium, really well done car with metal base, metal body, and rubber tires. And I think it might be one of my favorite times of Johnny Lightning because, uh, you know me, I like to crack open my cars, so packaging is not super important to me. And so I really enjoy this idea of having very minimal packaging, but you still get a premium die cast release all metal with rubber tires and really interesting decos uh, Johnny Lightning just did this like no other brand did and I can't remember when the demolition derby actually started this when this series actually got started I'd have to look it up to be for sure 
but uh, there were only a couple of demolition derby cars released with an all metal body all metal base and rubber tires uh, when Tommy took over they continued the demolition derby series but uh, there were plastic tires plastic bases and so forth so uh, one of the remaining uh, demolition derbies that has a metal base metal uh, body and rubber tires is this one here which I've shown in previous videos this one here came out much later in the Tomy series and had plastic base plastic tires still really nice deco so anyway the demolition derby series one of my favorites and this piece was really hard to track down uh, for a decent price for many years I finally got it so let's crack it open And of course, with the Demolition Derby series, uh, much like the Project in Progress series, all of the little minor details are really what make these cars so fantastic. The sort of cross pattern here that's painted over the tires on top of the blue wheel, and then you have just the straight up blue wheel here on the front. And I just love all of the graphics and uh, funny stuff here on the side. The real McCoy looks like it's just sort of painted on with a, with a paintbrush really crudely. And then you've got some you know rust and damage up here on the top and uh the exposed motor which is super cool i actually don't know if you would race a demolition derby car with that nice of a motor in it because you're just going to smash it up but um, this caprice wagon is just a really really great casting that uh, johnny lightning released but you can see on the other side you don't have the blue wheel you have a black one so it's just those little details that made these cars stand out to me and we'll take a look down into the interior there nice flat gray and you fit the whole family in there to go demolition derbian and not a lot of glass on the windows which makes sense for safety reasons obviously i'm not even sure if there would really be glass on the front um, windshield there but um, even this nice little rust stripe here on the back window which is not on the other side so again just little details that are on one side but not another just made these cars really really great and they're still doing this series but what makes this car great is it was one of the ones in the transition era of learning curve where you've got the metal body metal base rubber tires uh, along with the really great series and and uh, detailed decos that uh, johnny lightning was really well known for so really glad to track this car down and uh, add it to the collection in fact let's put it right up there so it can uh, enjoy its new spot in the motor hood. So these next two cars, I was really kind of stunned to see these. Recognized them right away, uh, of course, because uh, we're looking at the 70 Trans Am Plymouth Barracudas. This was the Dan Gurney car, the number 48 that we've seen in the Hot Wheels Vintage Racing release, among others. But we also have here the Sweet Savage release, the 42 car, which is the same casting, just a different, uh, slightly different uh, details on the car but I was confused because they were listed as green light releases but they're actually uh, released by Acme Trading Company and uh, they're also a die cast company I'm not sure that they do much 164 scale but for some reason they decided to uh, release these really two great uh, race cars and they've done a couple of other pieces I've got one more to look at here uh, on this video but there's not much information on the back as you can see it's the packaging is really beautiful it's got all the colors and insignia right and you can see on the back here it says greenlightcollectibles.com geo collectibles so it must be a collaboration where Acme is doing the licensing and uh, Greenlight is actually doing the tooling and the casting. That's my best guess anyway. But I'm super excited about these because they're limited edition die cast metal chassis. They're really beautiful releases. So let's crack this open and take a look at it. And we'll go ahead and crack open the other one too while we're at it. And all I have to say off the bat here is, wow, I uh, was taking these out of the package and I had to take a closer look for a second off camera because uh, I'm really impressed with these releases from Acme Trading Company and Greenlight. The Dan Gurney car here, the number 48, beautiful, uh, dark blue, it's got a sparkle finish to it, it's not too glossy, it's not too flat, it's got kind of a satin finish to it, just a gorgeous color. and all of the sponsor badges and deco on the side here is crisp and sharp easily readable 
and uh, you've got the Goodyear lettering on the tires and the wheels are pretty stunning chrome and uh, I think the tires are plastic it's hard to tell there's a little bit of squishiness to them but not really so I can't tell if they're plastic or rubber but it really doesn't matter the detail is there with the tread and you notice on the base which is metal you can see the green light logo there so it's definitely a green light casting and it's numbered uh, very similar to how green light numbers their releases decoration and detail on this is just um, my mouth kind of dropped to the floor when I saw these and just kind of came out of nowhere with these Acme releases uh, the Plymouth lettering here on the scoop really mean looking front there the blacked out front and uh, the, the color pattern here just on the front I tried to open the hood but it didn't seem to want to budge so I didn't want to force it you can sort of see down there in the in the interior but just beautiful detail all the way around look at the rear here on the uh, tail lights again just beautiful color detail very sharp and crisp and you actually can see a little bumper sticker there on the bumper I think it says uh, I think it says Dan Gurney for president which is pretty funny this uh, uh, spoiler here on the back looks like a separate piece man that is just a stunning 164 scale vintage race car right there I am really impressed with that let's take a look at the sweet savage really quick because it's basically the exact same casting but just a few different details as you can see on the on the side here just a few different details in terms of where the sponsor badges are and everything and on the hood you can see the V pattern uh, extending up uh, over more of the hood here on the sweet savage car versus the Dan Gurney but uh, everything else is pretty much exactly the same even the bumper sticker on the sweet savage still says uh, Dan Gurney for president so I don't know if that was uh, intentional or not if that was accurate to the to the uh, actual race car but I think uh, Agme's releasing these in some of the larger scale so uh, if you collect larger scale you may want to keep your eye out for these I'm just super impressed with both of these and I'm really hoping that Acme continues to release some of the heritage racing models because I will certainly gobble them up in fact I'm thinking that the uh, Acme might rival the Hot Wheels vintage racing release because we've looked at these before in a different video but if you can kind of sort of see up close there's there's quite a few more details on the Acme release and uh, the color of the vintage racing is is a little bit lighter blue and uh, the spoiler is a little less defined on the Hot Wheels and there's not really a scoop on the front either so I don't know I mean I love both of these releases I'm a sucker for all the different variations but I gotta give it to Acme and Greenlight because this release is is uh, kinda blowing me away right now you also notice on the 48 car here the the V pattern extends over the full hood more like the Swede Savage car and I've seen both variations on the actual car so I'm not sure if that got changed out or what um, but I've seen the full V pattern on the 48 so I think it's accurate it's just different versions of the 48 but you'll notice just little differences here and the uh, 48 was released three different times from Hot Wheels the Hall of Fame release here and then I can't remember this other release which uh, promotional release that that came out in I've talked about them I think in another video but you notice the darker blue color here uh, on both of the earlier releases and different wheels obviously on each of them but uh, so Hot Wheels definitely has uh, three different variations here but man nice work Acme and Greenlight I'm stunned by these and hope you keep keep doing some different race cars of course Dan Gurney lived a long life and was a legend uh, but uh, Swede Savage unfortunately uh, his life got cut short I think in his late 20s so definitely a legend but died too soon and uh, really cool that they've commemorated uh, these two cars uh, in a in a dual release from uh, Acme Trading Company one more piece here from Acme Trading Company the 67 Chevy C30 ramp truck with the iconic 67 Smokey Unic Trans Am Camaro had to pick this up this is another sort of collaboration between Acme and Greenlight but we've seen quite a few different variations of the 13 car uh, in the Hot Wheels releases so once again there's another variation that I've got to pick up but again not much detail in terms of history or reason behind doing these uh, castings but Acme is really doing a good job of uh, bringing some of these pieces back and there's quite a few more that are going to be released with ramp trucks so let's take a closer look here
So that took a lot longer to get out of the package than I'd hoped, but let's take a look at the Camaro up close here. And as you can see, nice black sides with the sort of copper gold top there. Nice sheen to the paint and um, the, the tampo is pretty crisp. Not a whole lot of extra uh, graphic detail on this Camaro and there really isn't on the other releases of the car either. The copper gold wheels look pretty good and the Goodyear lettered tires are nice and crisp. And if you look at the base of this car, you'll see that it is indeed a green light casting. See up here on the top, the, uh, the green light logo and then some of the information on the base included these painted uh, pipes that come out the side. And you see the treaded tires there, which are indeed rubber. Uh, but some of the details kind of start to stick out. In fact, if you kind of turn these wheels, you'll see the axle is kind of bent and makes the wheels turn a little wonky. And if you look closer at some of the details on the Camaro, like looking at it right here, it doesn't look too bad. But as soon as you compare it, say, to the other Camaro we just looked at, you start to notice some real differences in quality detail between the two castings. So here on the left, I have uh, the 100% green light uh, release of the Camaro. And on the right here is the Acme release, which it's technically the same casting, but you can just see some of the added details uh, just aren't up to par with the full green light casting and you notice it even more when you look at the rear of the cars in fact let's take a look here on the right here the Acme release is almost disappointing in its details just pretty rough around the edges and doesn't even compare really to the green light detail here on the left so I'm not sure exactly what uh, the strategy of, of Acme trading company is it seems like um, most of the cars that come on a, these ramp trucks, they're not 100% green light quality, but uh, I was really surprised, like with these other two releases we just talked about, the Cudas, which are extremely high quality, and it doesn't seem like they cut any corners with this particular release. So I'm wondering if Acme is going to start releasing some higher quality vintage race cars. Because to be honest, even though I think the ramp truck is a pretty cool idea, I'm just not that interested in them and I'm not interested in having you know 500 different variations of the ramp truck I mean I'm sure there's some collectors out there who might be watching that uh, enjoy collecting all the different ramp trucks but I'm really just into the car you know and I really enjoy the variations of, of vintage race cars and we'll be adding this to the display case but the ramp truck uh, thing is uh, for me sort of getting old and I and I don't really think the quality is very good on these ramp trucks either. The whole base is plastic and it is a dually uh, axle here on the back but it's not very well constructed and it just sort of looks a little wonky from the side. As you can see it's raised up in the front which may be true to form but it just seems a little wonky and it doesn't really uh, seem to fit for me but um, you know you guys may disagree you may really enjoy the ramp truck releases. Uh, I think it's a good idea all I'm saying is that I wish that if Acme's going to do uh, such a good job on the single car, then I would rather see Acme put all of its energy into the car itself as opposed to spreading thin across the quality of uh, the ramp truck and the car together. But that's just my two cents. So while we're on the subject, let's take a look at the two Hot Wheels releases of the Smoky Unit Camaro. This one here was the Vintage Racing release with the copper wheels. Very nice and really the, the Hot Wheels casting of the 67 Camaro is completely different than in character than the green light releases. It's a little shorter, it's got a little more curvature to it, it's a little stumpier and just has a very unique character that makes it real popular for Hot Wheels collectors because there's so many different variations of this casting. And uh, the earlier release of the Smoky Unit Camaro from Hot Wheels, this one here with the chrome wheels, a little more added detail around the door handle and, and the outline of the door there, but it's essentially the same casting. Even though I have some criticism for the Acme release and, and the sort of cutting corners on some quality, it still looks really great when you uh, pair it up with the other two releases from Hot Wheels. All right, let's finish up this video and take a look at the latest release from Hot Wheels, uh, the Redline Club. This was released in June of 2019, the 41 Willys Gasser, and I think it was the first release of the year besides the membership car, which came out in February. Could be mistaken about that, but I think they have a few more releases planned 
for uh, the rest of the year. But this one is really beautiful release, the orange color and the, the Willys gassers as opposed to the other two gassers which have been really popular, the, the Bel Air gasser and the, and the Chevy Nova. We're going to start seeing some gasser castings coming out from M2 very soon and who knows we may see other manufacturers jump on the ship. We certainly saw it happen with the uh, JDM craze with uh, M2 Zotto Japan and Tokyo Torque from Greenlight and uh, we're probably going to see some more gassers coming out soon but this is a nice choice really enjoy this and of course the card art is super fantastic falls in line with the Gasanova and the Candy Striper card art just really remarkable vintage kind of rendering here of uh, the, the car and I do keep these cards even though I crack them open I really do enjoy the artwork on the cards but got to have my cars cracked open and uh, got to look at them up close. So here's the back just in case you're interested. And this is number 8810 out of 10,000. So I'm not sure how they decide uh, how many they're going to make. You know, if you uh, vote on the selections releases, they'll make as many as collectors buy. But uh, with these other releases, I'm not sure how they decide uh, if they're going to be 10,000 or 15,000 or, or whatever. But this one is... 10,000 releases and uh, really beautiful piece here so let's crack it open and these are always a little more difficult to crack open but wow look at that just love the opening an RLC card the, the shininess of that Spectre Flame it's almost a mirror finish on this and uh, just has a beautiful beautiful color and shine to it that really really comes across outside of the package big old fat slick firestone tire on the back there with gunmetal wheels and uh, also gunmetal wheels on the on the skinnies up front which looks very authentic and just kind of worn in and speaking of worn in this extra detail that was talked about the discoloration of the pipes uh, just kind of shows the heat that's gone through there which really fantastic detail that they didn't have to do but it just really adds a lot of character and dimension to this piece once you have it out of the package and then as we look around you can see the tampo work here is quite crisp and uh, sharp the talking about text there with the sort of yellow glitter and shadowing there all very readable and crisp very nice and then the two tail lights in the back back around to the other side Wow, the hood front fender sort of fits really perfectly down there. There's no unevenness. It, it falls right in line with the rest of the design of the body. And of course that sort of cute front end of the 41 Willys Gasser, which gives it its character, but it's kind of deceptive, right? Because it's a, a mean drag machine. And look at the base, the reflective metal here, the polished metal base. Almost hard to read because it's so, uh, got a mirror finish on it. Really nice job from the Redline Club and Hot Wheels on this 41 Willys Gasser. All right, so that's going to do it for this Crack and Yak video. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at these cars up close and personal. Going to add these to the display case, and uh, uh, we've got some other videos planned, so I hope you'll stay tuned. In the meantime, thanks for watching and subscribing. You guys keep on motoring. I'll see you next time.